Hello and welcome to this tutorial series where we will be creating this exact hack and slash game that you see on screen now. Let me quickly give you a simple walkthrough of the game that we will be creating. This is sort of a lobby scene and at the top right we can see the score of our previous round and our high score. Nothing much is happening up here but if we jump down we land in this area. The sky then darkens which signals that we are transitioning into the first wave of enemies. Wave 1 is simple as it is just 4 bats but once we defeat those bats we can see that we transition into wave 2 which spawns frogs along with more bats. So each wave gets harder as the enemies have a multiplier that is increased every single wave. The game lasts forever, or for as long as the player stays alive. This is wave 9 for you. It's pretty overwhelming. But once our player dies, he has a little nice animation and responds at the top where the score is updated and we can jump right back in and play again. Really quickly, I just want to cover some important information for this series. There will be a minimum of three uploads per week, so be ready every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and the occasional Saturday tutorials. This entire course is completely free. But if you do want to help support me a little bit more, then a link to my Patreon page will be in the description below, and it really does mean more than the world. If you have any questions about anything, then let me know in the comments and I will be sure to help you out. Thanks, remember to subscribe to help you to push this good old hack and slash series to more aspiring game developers and let's begin okay so to get started with this tutorial we're going to go up here and we're going to click new in our Godot and we're going to name this project our hack and slash project because that's what it is we're going to name it that and then we're going to browse and i'm going to save it to my desktop select current folder create folder for our hack and slash game up here and then we can go and click create and edit and it's going to load in Godot and it's going to launch it with a empty project for us now there are a couple things that I do want to go over here and some ways that we're going to organize. First of all, to organize, we're going to create some folders. We're going to have one folder that's going to be for our artwork. And I'm going to tell you how you can get all that for completely free. Download it to your device so you can work through this with me step by step. We're also going to have a folder for our scene and or for our scenes. And then we're also going to have a folder for our scripts, right? Those are the three main folders that we're going to get going with and get this project started off with. Now, for the art, the art is going to be a bunch of different things gathered from itch.io. So I have this folder right here, and I'm going to drag it into our file system down here at the bottom. And you're going to see that it's going to load in, and it's going to be called base art straight from itch. Now, the reason I named it, because everything in here is straight from itch. I didn't go and modify anything. I didn't reorganize anything, and I didn't do anything just because some of these art pieces have licenses to where I can't redistribute it, right? So you're going to have to go directly to the link and download it straight from the HIO page. So of course, all the art in here, we're not going to be using, we're just going to be using some of it. But I left it just like this. So as we're going through the series, it is going to look the exact same in your project as it is going to look in mine because I did not reorganize the art. So everything should be organized. These are going to be the folders you download. So from one HIO page, you're going to download this folder. From another, you're going to download this folder. From another, you're going to download this folder. And from another, you're going to download this folder. You can drag these into your uh, project, add them into a base art folder like this. Now, I just did this on my computer, so that's why it's called base art straight from itch. But I'm going to take these four folders, I'm going to move them into our art folder that we just created, and then we can remove this base art folder here. And again, all of the links to these four different folders are going to be linked down below to all the four different itch.io pages to where you can go and download them. So we can get going with this series, and we can all have the same art and the same organization. So everything looks the same, and we can go through this step by step. Okay, so let's start with episode one and let's keep it pretty basic today. Let's just start with the main scenes and create the tile maps and maybe the collisions for the scenes. So our first scene, we're going to go up here and we're going to click on 2D scene and we're going to name this scene our lobby level because this is going to be the lobby area. This is going to be the starting level. This is where we're going to come whenever the game is not currently in progress. Okay, so then we can go to our lobby level and we can add in a tile map. Now, this tile map is going to be the island for our lobby world. So we can click on tile set over here, create a new tile set. The tile size is going to be 32 by 32 because that is what our sprite sheet is. Then if we come down here to the bottom, we're going to see tile set. We can click on that and we can drag in our tile set 36 by 36 PNG, which is going to be from a background folder. And we can click yes and it's going to automatically create all these tiles. So if we go to our tile map tab down here, you're going to see that we can click on these tiles and we can drag and we can draw them. If we zoom in very close, they're going to be a little bit blurry, and that is because we have to go up to our project, project settings, and we're going to actually have to change in our uh, texture from linear to nearest. If you see, and we do that, you're going to see that it automatically goes into a sharp pixel because it automatically adjusts the texture of the project, right? So, yep, basically how we do it is we can drag and drop like this, and we can just kind of draw out a little island and however we want to do it. So let me draw one out real quick that looks right and I'll be right back.
Okay, so something like this looks pretty good for the ground. Now we're gonna end up adding a home. We're gonna add some bushes and the bushes is what I wanna go over next because the way that we're gonna do the bushes, right? So up here at our lobby level, we can just name this our ground tile map. Then we can go in and we can add in another tile map. And this tile map is going to be called the bush tile map or we could call it the background tile map or something like that. We'll call it the bush because the only thing we're gonna be using it for is bushes. So we can click on new tile set Come over here, create a new one. This time we want to leave it at 16 by 16. Come down here to tile set and we can drag in our bush sprite sheet just like this and automatically create the tiles. Now, the way that we're going to do this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to end up using layering, right? So the darker we're going to want to be in the back because we want those to show behind this bush. So to do that, we can go over here to our layers in the inspector and we can add in another element. And we're just going to leave it as layer zero and layer one. Layer zero is gonna one that shows behind and the layer one is gonna show in front. So for layer zero, we can start with this type of bush, right? And we can add, just add a corner right here and then we can add maybe a couple right here. And remember, we're gonna want a house or something and it's gonna cover up what's here. So we can end it here and we can always come back and we can always change this up. We can just keep this a straight line because the house should cover this up here come all the way down to the ground. We can come out here. Maybe we want it to come more of like this way and then we want it to come out again and then maybe we want it to drop down here and then something like this, right? And then we can just end it there, right? Because right here, it looks a little funny, but I promise it's gonna come together as we keep on adding to our map. Now, from layer zero, we can go to layer one and we can add in some normal bushes. These normal bushes, we can start them from the ground. Maybe we wanna start here, and then maybe we can come up. We can connect these just like this, or maybe we wanna go, maybe, or we can we can just leave it like this, right? But maybe we wanna overlap this a little bit more. Maybe it'll, it'll look a little bit better if we come and we start out here, and then we come up right here like this. Or maybe we can come and do a straight there like that, and then we can try and, go all the way up like this all the way over here and then maybe we can kind of like cut back down like this forsake maybe like this let's see how this looks it's going to cover up those 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 uh barrels of course but maybe we can do something like this right and then we can go and we can put this behind this tile map because that's where it's going to be. And you're going to kind of see it looks a little funny, but it doesn't look bad. And we'll, we'll keep it like this. We can always come back and we can always change it later on. So make sure bush tile map is above the ground tile map in the uh, scene tree up here like this. So it shows behind. You're going to see that these bushes, they're, they're kind of like they're behind these bushes, just like they should be. But they're also look weird so let's go up here and let's just drag in our house it's going to automatically create our house as a sprite 2d which is exactly what we want and our house is going to almost look perfect already right so we can do something like this we can position it maybe right here and that looks fine and then we can go and we can just drag in our tree and we can throw our tree maybe right here and that is a scene that is pretty much set up for us right I want to go up here to our lobby and I want to add in a static body. And the reason I'm going to do this static body is because this is going to be more of just a, we're going to use this as sort of like a folder, right? So we can say our sprites, right? Our background sprites, or we can just call it our sprites. Uh, we'll, we'll call it background sprites, something like this, right? just so we know and then we'll end up later adding our collisions or our major collisions within here just so it keeps everything a little bit more organized i want to also go in here and i want to add in our background which is going to be for now just a normal background later on in the series when we go over parallax backgrounds we're going to end up changing this into a parallax background but for now i just want to leave it just like this maybe we can drag it a little bit down like this put it all the way above our bush tile map just so we can't really see anything else and that's going to look pretty good, right? So that is our scene one. This is our lobby scene. This is our lobby level. We're going to keep it here for now. We're always going to come back and we're going to make changes and adjustments to it later on in the series to make it fit more of what we're doing. But we can save this scene by clicking Control S. We just make sure we save this into our scenes folder just like that. And then we can come up here to the top. We're going to create another 2D scene. I'm going to move this 
through I'm gonna move through this one a little bit quicker just because it is kind of the same thing that we're going to be doing but we're gonna call this our stage level and this stage level is going to actually be a little easier than the other level where it's just gonna consist of a tile map and it's gonna consist of the background but the tile map here is going to be a little bit more complex but we're gonna do it in the exact same fashion right so uh, actually, it's not going to be co more complex. All we're going to be doing is using two layers, one for the fences and then one for the rocks, just so we can have rocks and fences overlaid. I'll kind of explain that here in just a minute. But if we go over here and we click on tile set, we create a new tile set, come down here. We're just going to use the exact same tile set that we used last time. And we're going to create all the same tiles. And we forgot to change it. So let's remove this. Let's go up here. Let's change this by 32 by 32. And then let's drag in our tile set again, automatically create the tiles, and you're gonna see that everything is going to come up. Okay, and then now I'm gonna go into a time lapse real quick, and we're gonna do this the exact same way. I'm just gonna hop out of time lapse whenever we start to do this separate layering, so we can go over the layering one more time together. But I'll be right back once I just kind of lay out some basic settings of our map, right? Okay, so this is some basic grounding for our level. Now, what I wanna go over is I wanna go over these rocks, right? So we have these rocks here and we have these fences. Now, we're gonna have to do one of these on a separate level because we want something to be in front of the other, right? So we're gonna want the rocks to be in front of the fence. So we're gonna put the fences here on level zero. So when we go to layer one, we can put the rocks. And the fences are just going to, we can throw in some random ones wherever we want. And then we can fill in the rest with the other ones. So it kind of looks like they're a little different throughout the entire thing and it gives it more of this like run down kind of like jaggedy look more than just like a perfectly straight you know fake looking fence because no fence is perfectly like the exact same every single one they're all going to be different so that's what we're going to do and then we can switch over here to layer zero or layer one and then we can add in some rocks maybe we want a big rock maybe we want some small rocks and maybe we want one more big rock something like this right now if we it's gonna look kind of blurred out, so it's gonna look a little funny, but if we go and we click in our stage level up here, you're gonna see that it kind of looks like a stage level and how it's supposed to be, so that looks good. Then we can go up here and we can add in, again, whoops, I don't know why I'm going up in there. I'm meant to drag in this background here, this background sprite, and these background sprites, they're, go they're, they're gonna look a little funny right now just because of the way that we have them set up and we're just throwing them in there just for, for looks right now. But eventually, these are going to be parallax backgrounds, right? So they're going to be parallax backgrounds, and they're going to move as we walk around, just like this that you see on screen now, right? So it's like a parallax background, and they're going to look a little bit more advanced. But for now, we're just going to leave it like this. We can save this scene into our scenes folder. And then real quick, the final thing I want to go over is some collisions. So for collisions, we're going to add in a static body. We can name this static body our collisions, and we can end up adding in a collision collision shape 2d and for this level we can add in a rectangle right so we can add in a rectangle and we're just going to drag and drop this rectangle just like this we want the player not to walk way up here but we want them to walk midway through the level so we're going to stop the collision halfway in the grass so it looks like the player is actually walking on the grass and not walking on top of the grass right so we can extend this and we can make this our level just like this. And of course, we can't have our player walking on and off of the level. So we can name this here our ground collision. And then we can end up adding in another collision shape 2D just like this. And this collision shape 2D is going to be a rectangle as well. And we don't we, we want to be able to walk on this wall, but we don't want to be able to walk off the map. Right. And we're going to make this is all going to look better once we have cameras. But for now, we can say something like this, and we can say left, left wall collision shape, right? And then we can add in another collision shape 2D. And we can make this a, another rectangle, and we can come over here, and we can drag and drop this on this side, like this, right over this area, so that we can't walk off this edge of the map either. And then we can come over here, and we can name this one right wall collision and that can be saved and this is going to be our scene this is our stage scene for now this is all we're going to need for now then we can come up here to our lobby level and we can set up some basic collisions over here so 
This one's going to be a little bit different because our player is going to jump off and we want our player to fall down here. But we don't want our player to be able to jump all the way out here. So we're going to add in a big old collision shape right here. So to do this, we're going to add in another static body. This static body is going to be named again collisions. And we're going to use a collision polygon this time. And so to do this, we're going to click where we want. So remember that we want our player to walk in the middle of the grass so we can start it right here in the middle of the grass come over here to the edge and then we can once we get to the edge we can drag it all the way down just like this until the very very bottom of our area then i want to wrap it this way because you remember we cannot have our player jumping too far out on this angle so we can drag it up here like this and then we can come across like this come all the way down come all the way out here and all the way back around to where we want it to stop so we want a wall on this edge of our map so we can come down here, we can draw this wall. And where do we want our player to walk? Well, remember we want our player to walk in the middle of the grass, so we can stop it there. And then we can follow along and connect it with this one by clicking it. And you're gonna see that it's going to make a big old collision for us. It's gonna make this all collision. Everything that's colored here is gonna be collision. So now we can walk here and we can jump down this area, but we can't go all the way off the map. And eventually we're gonna have an area 2D here, which is gonna catch our player when it's jumping and everything is going to be Good, so if we click play, you're gonna see that it has our scene and that is our scene. That is our very first scene of our game. And we also can come over here to stage level and click F6 to play. And you're gonna see that we have our scene. So camera and stuff is not set up yet, of course, but this is only episode one. We just wanna go over some of the basics, some of the beginning stuff, some of the setup stuff that we're gonna need for future episodes. And I hope this video was able to kind of get you started with this series. And I really know that this series is gonna be so beneficial to learning the Godot engine and learning about how to create a hack and slash game. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Next episode, we're going to be going over the player and we're going to be going over camera. So that's going to be pretty important. And until then, stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to see you next time. Stay safe and bye-bye.